welcome. Welcome, Nicola. Hello. Um, thank you very much for agreeing to, to talk to us this evening as part of Mental Health Awareness Week. Um, with Mental Health Awareness Week being on the theme of nature and the environment, it seems particularly appropriate to ask somebody who is a community gardener and an environmental gardening engagement officer. Have I got it right? Yes. Yes, pretty much. Yes. <laughs> it's a bit of a mouthful of a, a job title. Environmental Engagement Officer, that's right, yeah. yes, uh, for Castle Haven Community Centre, which is our, our um, nearest other community association, and um, yeah, very, very good to have you here. Thank I'm you. introducing you because I'm a trustee of Primrose Hill Community Association, um, and I'm also involved with Transition Primrose Hill, which is a local green grouping, which, you know, encourages people to grow as well. Um, who, you know, particularly interested in, in what you've got to say. And I think, you know, all of us who've been able to grow anything during the lockdown have found it that it definitely has helped mental health. Um, it's something to think about, something to be able to slow down and watch and to eat the results of, which is even better. <laughs> so, um, uh, is there, uh, well, we are recording just to let the other people, uh, people on the on the Zoom know that um, this is being recorded. There were not very many people here. We we know that a lot of people do watch our talks later on 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 YouTube, and uh, welcome to anybody doing that as well. Um, so our talks are all free, but we've got a link for the to our total giving um, site um, for the community association um, in the chat. So if anybody feels moved to donate, um, of course, like all community associations, and I'm sure Castle Haven is the same, we've really suffered during lockdown with not being able to rent out our premises and um, it, it, it's been quite difficult. Um, good. Well, I think I'm going to hand over to you to talk about mental health and gardening. Thank you, Nicola. Thank you everyone and thank you for having me. Um, so the uh, title of my talk today is uh, Growing Mental Wellbeing, How Gardening Can Help Us Heal. Okay and um, as we were just mentioning uh, it's Mental Health Awareness Week and uh, this year's theme is nature which is very very apt. I mean in lockdown everyone became much more engaged in nature and gardening than they had previously been. Um, at Coswell Haven, we also saw an increase in volunteers, which was really good after the kind of first lockdown and when people were allowed to go out again. We had a lot of Zoom classes about gardening, which people were really engaged in as well. Um, so green space has never been more important. Everyone got to know their local parks. And also this year, I think awareness of climate change has also increased a lot as well. Um, so it's yeah a very good theme. So um, this uh, talk is going to be uh, kind of divided into two parts. So I'm going to um, talk about first the scientific backup uh, to the benefits of nature. So we're going to go through a few scientific facts and uh, prove that nature and gardening really are good for you. And then I'm going to talk a bit more about my kind of lived experience of community gardening and the impact that I've seen that gardening has on communities. Um, so first is uh, the science, okay? So fact number one is that soil is a natural antidepressant, okay? So there are more microorganisms in a teaspoon of soil than there are people on the earth. So that's just one teaspoon, okay? So that's there can be anywhere between a million to a billion different bacteria, fungi, insects, um, and microorganisms. And while we are very aware of our gut microbiome these days, because especially because of yogurts and you know gut health, um, we're not so aware of um, how much the soil microbiome is important to us as well. Okay, so. In this ginormous mix of bacteria, there is a one specific good bacteria called Mycobacterium vacae, okay? Now this is a great bacteria. I will type it in the chat box afterwards because it's obviously a tricky spelling. And it has been shown um, scientifically to increase serotonin levels when we come into contact with it. So it is a natural antidepressant and works in the same way as antidepressants do. So literally getting your hands dirty 
in the soil or in your garden or in a public park if you're volunteering is actually good for you. Okay, so um, I have many, many experiences of, of gardening being good for you as well. I used to work at a mental health gardening project and we use the uh, Warwick Edinburgh Mental Wellbeing Scale where you rate your wellbeing from one to 10 at the beginning and the end of the session and everyone always went up. There was never anyone that went down throughout the day. Okay, so fact number two, um, spending just 20 minutes in a natural space whether you're sitting on a bench or going for a walk, will lower your stress hormone levels. Okay, so this research was published in 2019 in Frontiers in Psychology, and they did saliva tests on people before and after they spent time in nature, and their cortisol levels, which is our stress hormone, dropped afterwards. Okay, so if you spend 30 minutes, it decreases even more. And it will continue to decrease, though, on a slightly slower level as well. So this can be anything from, you know, even looking out your window and looking at nature has been kind of proven to help as well. So it's a really important thing to do if you can during the day. And fact number three, um, we don't always need to go outside. Indoor plants are good for us too. Um, so a study from Exeter University. Um, so this... <laughs> You know, whether you uh, are interested in pro productivity levels in the office, it's not always something that needs to be increased. But having uh, plants in your office as compared to having an office without plants will increase productivity by up to 15%. OK, so if you are in charge of a, work a workforce, put lots of plants in their office. Um, they also have been shown to increase creativity in the workforce as well and uh, cognition rates. In our homes as well, um, plants can reduce stress and they boost our immune systems. And there are lots of plants that remove toxins and help to improve air quality. So a particular one that's uh, very common is your humble spider plant, which I actually do have one here. <laughs> there we go. So um, that is one of the air purifying plants and will help to remove particles from your air and filter things for you. Um, so having uh, plants in hospital recovery rooms has also been shown to help patients to heal quicker as well. So um, compared to not having plants there. So they really are, you know, we are natural animals. This is something that we forget, especially living in cities um, and surrounded by concrete. We are meant to be in nature. It is our natural environment. So, of course, it makes sense that having it there as opposed to not is going to improve our well-being and um, which leads me nicely on to fact four that gardening is exercise who knew <laughs> okay so gardening if you are working outside in your garden if you're in a community garden at your allotment you are getting quite a physical workout okay you can be digging you can be hoeing you can be bending stretching it is very, very um, strenuous exercise. I did garden maintenance for uh, six months. When I first started gardening, I had never been fitter in my entire life. <laughs> um, like raking was, is, is, if you ever want abs, that is the thing to do, go and rake some enormous lawns. Um, and uh, thankfully, the NHS are increasingly uh, viewing gardening as something that is very good for us as well. Um, social prescribing and green care are now in the news much more than they were and GPs are starting to prescribe um, holistic activities like gardening for patients with kind of mild to moderate poor mental health. Um, luckily first at Castle Haven we're in good contact with GPs in the local area and we've had some volunteers socially prescribed to us. Um, we've also worked with the Good Gym and the Green Gym who also um, send people to uh, volunteer, volunteering gardening, which is really good. And um, as an example of how seriously the NHS are taking gardening for the past three years at Castle Haven, we've been running a course called Green Prescription, Growing Plants for Wellbeing in partnership with the uh, Camden and Islington NHS Recovery College. So um, that is like a four week course and it's for people recovering from poor mental health. And it has been hugely popular and it's something that I wish that every um, NHS trust in the country was doing because it really did help a lot of people. OK, 
Horticultural therapy is also uh, becoming more popular as well, sometimes called ecotherapy. And this is with uh, trained uh, psychotherapists or horticultural therapists and is uh, used again to help people um, with their recovery too. Um, so, yeah, the Recovery College is, um, they are based on St Pancras Way um, in, uh, yeah, in Camden, and um, they are very, very good if uh, you want to point people in their direction. All their courses are free, you just have to sign up on the website and you can get in contact with them. They're really, really good. Okay, um, so um, now we kind of know all these scientific facts about gardening. What we really need to know is how do we integrate gardening and nature into our everyday lives, especially in London, which is still a busy city, despite the fact we've all slowed down. We are increasingly or have been indoors and are just kind of starting to be released into the world again. So with that in mind um, and knowing how nature has been important to us, what changes can we make in the future to make sure we keep this up? Um, so there are millions of ways, just like there are millions of bacteria in the soil, millions of ways to um, increase your daily interactions with nature. So first and foremost, go for a walk in your daily park, in your local park. Um, there's outdoor sport, there's uh, outdoor yoga and Tai Chi increasingly in lots of parks. There is the green gym. And the good gym as well, who uh, do uh, exercise in nature or run to a community park and help them dig a bed. Um, so if you're able to access uh, outdoor space, these are really good things to do. In your own home, um, great, you can grow houseplants. If you have space, you can grow vegetables, flowers. And if you're on a low budget, you can grow veg from food scraps as well, which can simply be getting the seeds out of a tomato putting the end of a lettuce in uh, some water and it will start to grow back new leaves um, or uh, you, uh, getting herbs that have already been cut, putting them in some water and they will grow back as well. So there is plenty to do and there are loads of online tutorials. Um, there's seed swaps, plant swaps and uh, workshops at Castle Haven that you can go to. Um, this is where I'm going to come on to community gardens because obviously not everyone is lucky enough to have gardens or balconies or allotments. Um, a friend of mine recently said to me that she doesn't know of any other community activity that brings people together like community gardens do. And it is absolutely true. It brings the most diverse group of people I've ever worked with together um, from uh, working class white men, um, to uh, Asian women, to uh, young children, to people in their 80s. It's a very, very huge mix of people um, and all very happily working together. Okay, so it's um, a little bit of info about Castle Haven now for those who might want to volunteer with us in the future. So uh, we are in the centre of Camden Town. We are Camden Town's biggest green space. We have uh, two community parks, uh, a greenhouse and veg growing space, um, another veg growing space, and potentially even a third veg growing space which is about uh, 10 minutes down the road from us. Um, before the pandemic, we ran workshops in our greenhouse and we'll be starting to do this again as the restrictions lift. Um, we have a veg shop where we sell the produce that we grow. Um, and we have community growing classes as well. Um, our main kind of thing to get involved in now is our weekly uh, volunteering session, which is every Wednesday from 10.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m., which is called Get Fit, Get Active, Get Gardening. Um, so if anyone wants to come along to that, you're more than welcome to. And we do a wide range of gardening activities. So, um, as to end on a nice kind of positive note, I wanted to share some of our volunteer success stories with you, um, just to show how the impact of um, gardening on people's mental and physical well-being. So I'm just going to um, share some photos. If you give me one second. Okay. Okay. Can everyone see that? 
Yeah, so this is uh, Daisy. Um, so Daisy was furloughed uh, at, it, from the first lockdown till almost a year she was furloughed for. So she lives very, very locally to uh, the parks. And uh, she, as you can see, she's standing in our wildflower area. And she was responsible for growing nearly all of the flowers in our um, wildflower area during that time. Uh, she grew all these sunflowers, all of this cosmos that you can see right in front of her. And um, now, thankfully, she has got, she got made uh, redundant but thankfully has now got another full-time job and is still engaging with the project and coming in at weekends to grow flowers for this year as well. So she was really, really engaged uh, during uh, lockdown, obviously, because she had, was out of work. So um, it's really, really helped her mental health during that time. Um, yeah, we love her because she grew all our flowers for us. Um, next up, we have George. Now, George is a our community gardener and he is now in the paid role of this he used to be a volunteer was a volunteer for I don't even know he's been there as long as I have and before it may be five years it may have been longer um and thankfully we were able after our last community gardener left to employ George um and he has uh, blossomed in the job um he absolutely loves Castlehaven uh, he lives very close by to the project as well um, so he's showing how becoming a volunteer in a gardening project, which is how I got my job as well, can lead you into work too. Um, next, and this is Hiba, who uh, also volunteered with us uh, last summer during the period where people could. And um, she'd never volunteered at a gardening project before. And within maybe two months of starting, she had then got herself onto a paid apprenticeship um, at a Wolves Lane Community Gardens in uh, Haringey and is now doing community food growing herself. So it's also another great success story. And um, I just wanted to end with um, someone who may or may not be a success depending on people's political opinion at the moment, but he's our other community gardener who has, um, uh, came and planted a tomato for us uh, last um, summer as well. So <laughs> um, that's who we'll end on. And uh, we also have um, some lovely uh, poppies that we grew as well. So this is what our site looked like uh, last kind of May during the lockdown and um, really helped to lift people's spirits at the time. Okay, so um, yeah, I will end on that note. Um, so if anyone has any questions right now, then um, please do let me know. Unmute, unmute, fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it was, that was really interesting. I mean, particularly Thanks. the scientific stuff. I mean, I kind of knew all the other social stuff that it's very good for you. And I, as mm. John from the PPG knows, I've been going on about social prescribing for many years. Yeah. Um, so yes, very, very, very interesting um, and heartwarming to, to see how people are able to engage and as you say, yeah. so many different people can engage at, at many different levels. Mm -hmm. uh, Keir looked look rather happier than he probably does now. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> it was at the beginning. So, um, yes. I, it, unfortunately, the tomato that I got him to plant turned out to be an orange tomato as opposed to a red one. So it's a bit disappointed <laughs> with that as well. The, the wrong political colour. Um, <laughs> Yes, so I, I was interested to hear that you actually managed to you grow enough veg to actually run a veg shop. That's very yes, um, we yes we did uh, last year. So we have recently uh, started working with another project that was nearby where they have a bigger allotment space. So a lot of the, the veg was coming from there, but it was all uh, grown within Camden and organically grown as well. So yes, fantastic. So you grow organically? Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay. Great. So any questions from, from others? Um, Kamari says, hi everyone, apologies for late arrival. <laughs> you can listen, Kamari, you can, we've recorded it. So you can listen to the beginning of the talk on our YouTube channel in a day or two. So you won't miss it, which sounds, which, which is really good. Any other questions? Um, 
I was kind of hoping for some free um, gardening tips. <laughs> <laughs> what, what kind of gardening tips do you need? Well, John? Uh, we've got a small patio garden, which is um, unfortunately we're sort of uh, squeezed next door to a garage belonging to a neighbouring block. And um, we've got a kind of northwest facing wall where I'm trying at the moment to, to grow some clematis plants. And they seem to be uh, thriving at the moment after having apparently died during the winter. Yes, but they, do, they in, will die back during the winter generally, okay. depending on the on the type or the species. That's that's. Don't worry about that. But I was wondering if, if there are any other climbing plants you could recommend for that sort of, you know, shade um, area. Um, some jasmine will work it's we really got to depend on the kind of species specific ones so there are kind of evergreen jasmine which um are more likely to work because they're less dependent on the sun um honeysuckle may um ivy is obviously going to be the climber that will grow anywhere well, we, we just got rid of a wall for <laughs> okay. <it> already, so. <laughs> you're not keen for anymore don't want any um, more ivy no. yeah and um you could try uh, growing a passion flower. I mean, it does like sun, but they do grow very vigorously um, and they are beautiful as well. That's really helpful, thanks. Okay. Martin, did you have a question? No, I was just curious. Um, I've, been, um, I've been doing a lot of reading and listening to talks about social prescribing. Mm. And there's a new course at um, University College London in creative uh -huh. health, a master's degree in creative health. Mm. Um, creative health is a large umbrella under which, and social prescribing is a large umbrella under which comes green therapy mm. and horticultural therapy. And something else you mentioned by name, but I didn't catch it. You said horticultural um, therapy, you said also known as... and you uh, Ecotherapy. It, ha it okay. comes under a lot of different names, but they all are basically the same thing. It's yeah. Just, yeah. Um, and I just wondered whether you'd had any contact with them because they're, they're, they work quite a, they're based in the UCL campus in Camden so they and they have a number of community outreach work link workers I think um, or they're trying to create partnerships with, with those organisations um, yeah, so, um, no I have not I've uh, I did some research with Sustain about our community gardens and social prescribing um, so I, I can send you the link to that afterwards. And that was more kind of trying to work out how um, ready community gardens are for social prescribing, um, because it's been around for a long time in a way. It's just been labelled social prescribing more kind of recently and become like a bigger thing. But um, yeah, I haven't haven't been in contact with those guys. It's been resourced as well. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. But I think the, the thing that came out of the research was while um, it's being resourced on the NHS side, there's a lot of uh, potentially pressure on the community gardens, which don't really have the infrastructure to be taking on a lot of people. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, at Castle Haven, we do have referrals for, also from the Camden Society too, and we have uh, people from Mind in Camden, but it is just me and uh, George, who does more of the kind of caretaking and community gardening stuff. So it, it is, yeah, the, um, it's not a well-paid world, community gardening. So there needs to be, if the NHS want to socially prescribe, they need to invest in the staff too. Otherwise it's, yeah. Yes. I know you have a connection, don't you, with Voluntary Action at Camden? Yes, yes, we have worked with those guys in the past as well. So yeah, we get uh, referrals from all over the place, actually. And a lot of people who uh, join us uh, just because they've uh, either self-referred or just are out of work um, or students. So it's, it's a really mixed bunch of people. I see, I see Kamari. I see Kamari says um, that she, he, who, Kamari, I can't see you. Um, has a uh, social prescriber located who's been a lifesaver via Aww. the GP. So that's really yes, good. That's really, really good. Yes. Yeah, very heartwarming. Yeah. In fact, yeah. that was one of the things I was going to ask you what kind of support you have, because uh, I mean, I in the past have worked for a local association for mental health. So I know that it's it's um, not always easy working with people who have, um, you know, big problems. 
Mm. And you sometimes yes. need support too. I just wondered if you get any. Um, yeah. um, we have a uh, we have a, a bit of support, but very yes, it's very very minimum sort of thing. I have very supportive colleagues, which is really good, and we all uh, support each other. But it is yes, it, it's the problem with the charity work is that the, the infrastructure is is often kind of very small. So <laughs> yes. uh, it's interesting. It sounds like you could do with. Well, what what therapists would call supervision, but yes, <laughs> yes, I have yeah. had that at a previous job as well. So yes, it is is something we definitely a mental health charity. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we're not technically a mental health charity, but I think if the NHS and other mental health charities are sending people to us, it should maybe be up to them to provide the supervision. Yes. maybe something I should be pressing for myself yeah. actually. Yes. Yeah. Hi everyone. Hi, is that Kamara? Sorry, I've just I've just unmuted my I've just realised I've I've had my um, microphone on mute. So hello, yes. yes. So I have. Shall I tell you a bit about my um, social? Yes, please concern? do. Yes, Can that would be really interesting. Okay, helpful. so um, I was made redundant, and I was in a very very low place during the lockdown because. Uh, so the company that I was working for wasn't really sure whether the furlough system was going to continue. So I was in that um, conveyor belt of those people who got made redundant on the 31st of October. Mm. And my uh, GP prescribed, um, uh, referred me to a social prescriber who had helped me enormously, actually. I think it's, um, um, I think they've been, they're, they're great. Um, I not really heard about it because I have, um, I'll be very open. I have uh, OCD and ADD. And it's been a real lifesaver because um, with OCD, you're, you're constantly in, in a state of worry. Mm. So I think um, a, another thing that's been a real lifesaver for me is um, uh, attacking the garden that doesn't belong to me <laughs> in front of me. And I've just kind of sort of been chucking seeds at it. And I've got this kind of an orchardy. Uh, kind of grass growing with all sorts of wild flowers in my front garden. I'm not particularly green thumb person, but somehow the locals have been going past saying, oh, wow, your garden's looking really pretty good. So that's been a lifesaver to be outside. And I would really like to come and join you all at some point when things get open to find out a bit more about, you know. um, um, But I think, yeah, that's why I, um, I... you know, wanted to join this Zoom meeting. I'm sorry, I haven't got my cam- camera on, on because I'm a little bit. That's fine. That's really fine. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but anyway, I can hear you now. That's good. <laughs> That's good. But yeah, cool. no. Uh, so she's linked me with various job hub as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. Um, what else was there? Uh, there was a uh, citizens advice type of a lady. Uh, I think Age UK, is it Age UK? Mm-hmm. I think, yeah. Um, Mind in Camden, mm. is it Mind in Camden? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's quite a bit. Like, um, so I think they're 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 amazing. I'm I'm really glad that they're there because they're also mm. linked in with the welfare services as well mm. uh, within Camden Council. So yeah. Um, yeah, thumbs up to the social prescribers. Great, great. Well, you know, we should be telling our local GP yet again. <laughs> Um, oh, I'm I'm with Adelaide Medical. I don't know who you're with. Uh, is it Caroline? Caroline? No. We're with uh, Primrose Hill um, Surgery. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, well, I would think. Well, we're only around the corner, isn't it, Adelaide? Yes, yeah. Adelaide is around the corner. Yes, indeed. But yeah. I, I would suggest you do speak to your GP and and, and ask for some you know, referral. You you will find. There are services available. I think you just need to ask. Yes, yes, but Kamari says that she has been helped by her GP to the social. Oh, she has. social yeah, no, no, I have. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, it was first thing that she did actually when I went. You know, very, and, I, and, we had a telephone conversation, and um, yeah, she kind of referred me straight away, and um, and they were really quick to get on get in touch with me. So. Um, yeah, no, I'm still in touch with her. She calls me every two weeks um, and sends me lots of links and uh, things to do with walk groups as well. Mm. Is somebody doing a walking group here? 
we 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 have a walking group every wednesday morning 10 30. we meet, oh, do you? I'll come and we say meet, hello we meet in the corner of uh, at the corner of yeah. primrose, primrose hill road and regent's park road Obviously, okay yeah i'm just around the corner from there so yes. i can come and join yes you. well come and say hi we're, we're tomorrow morning we're doing four blue plaques so oh, okay. we're walking from blue plaque to blue plaque but normally we walk <laughs> down into regent's park um yeah right. so um, and we do some nature type things. We've got a tree um, identification walk coming up. Uh -huh. And um, I've got somebody who's going to do a street trees walk around mm -hmm. Primrose Hill. And also the um, May Weber, who's the mission invertebrate person at, at Regent's Park is going to do a walk. So we won't do a themed walk every week, but every now and then we'll do one. Okay, brilliant. So, yeah. And nature is always available. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, thank goodness for that. We're so lucky to be surrounded by lots of parks. Absolutely. It couldn't, we couldn't, you know, we are so lucky to be able to walk straight into these beautiful parks and, and yeah. 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 We really are. Hey, so, can I ask you something? Just um mm -hmm. the you know, there's been this kind of interesting uh, uh research about the way that trees are all kind of connected with each other underneath mm. the ground. Hmm. Um, I guess, you know, all, I, I guess all plants probably are, although trees have probably, you know, they've been, they've, they've been in one place longer. So I guess they've hmm. made a connection. Um, hmm. And, you know, that knowing that has kind of changed my experience of, you know, of walking in trees because this is, hmm. you know, there is, I'm walking in a community here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it is, it is. I think people tend to think you're being a bit hippy dippy if you talk about plants talking to each other, but you're not at all because they are. They just because their communication is different from ours doesn't mean that they're not communicating because yeah, they're they are sharing information. Um, I think they've done research into if there's uh, pests in the area as well. Um, trees that are, are further or plants that are further away will start to release different hormones because they know that other plants have been attacked sort of thing so that they do they do experience the world in a sensual way so it's yeah exactly and they, le and they learn I exactly heard. they do they, they know how to grow towards uh certain things as well if they if there's a fence nearby for example and it's a climber it knows how to get there so they yeah exactly i've been watching my green bean twirling mm. round its bamboo stick <laughs> yeah. so it's satisfying mm. yeah, but I, I also heard an amazing experiment where uh, I think it's a mimosa isn't it that that closes you know if, mm. if, if they have a shock so mm. they they dropped the mimosa not from in a pot but not from too high up and it, it closed mm. and when they after they done it three or four times it stopped closing because it knew that it wasn't actually going to be hurt yeah, okay. Yeah. Kind of weird, so, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. There was also another one where um in a kind of uh scientific environment, a uh, very sterile environment, they played a plant the sound of a caterpillar munching its leaves and it uh produced its uh stress hormones just from the sound of it, even though wow. the caterpillar wasn't there wow. and it was in a laboratory. So it's wow. yeah, there's a lot more going on than we are aware of. So they can hear as well. Yeah. So Martin, Martin just put an interesting uh, uh, mm. into the chat. Can you? Can you? What, oh what, yeah. What's all of this? Exactly what you're talking about, Nicola, and mm. uh, and uh, as I told you your name, sorry, I got Primrose Hill Community Association. I'm, I'm, Dor I'm Doro. Yes. Doro. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, uh, yes. All of that stuff is is mm. kind of assembled in this short book, Brilliant Green. Mm. Brilliant. 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 Thank you. Another book which. Um, yeah, I actually ask ask a question to Nicola. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for sharing this information. It's so inspiring and, and so so great. But you mentioned the, the, the research study done in 2019 about spending 20 minutes in the nature mm -hmm. and release, you know, help us with, with the stress. Yes. Is there are there any research that apart from proximity to nature, is it possible that we watch videos or photos of nature? Would that affect um, similarly or not? I'm not Even sure. If it's like um, a virtual reality environment. Yeah, no, no. I, I know my friend, actually one of my friends was doing research into this. And I, I assume research has been done about, um, I think she was doing it where you looked at photos of nature. 
Exactly. Um, so I'm not sure if there's already, I'm sure some research has been done, but I don't know of the published studies off by hand. But yeah, virtual reality is, is a new frontier, isn't it? But I can imagine maybe, yes, but it's, it's a different, I, I don't want to kind of over egg it because I want people to go out into the parks as opposed to putting on a virtual reality headset, but that's not possible for everyone. So if you have accessibility issues and VR is going to enable you to relax in that same way, then it, yeah, I'm all for that. So I assume the research has probably been done as we speak. So. But you, you, miss, you miss all those microbes, don't you, in the soil? You, yes, you do miss the, the billions of microbes in the soil. Yeah, but, but you um, for some people who can't go into nature physically, they're locked in their beds, and then maybe that, that could be a, a trigger or something. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And, and it's in those cases that if you are, yeah, if you are in your house, that's where house plants become very important, and having plants around you is, is still going to have an effect. So. Of course, it's not just the visual thing, is it? It's the smell, no, it's, the touch, yeah, the, the, exactly, the and, and, and yeah, the breeze yeah. and everything else. Exactly, so it's very I mean, hard to replicate it in in virtual reality. Give it maybe twenty years though, and you, you know, don't know what. what maybe we'll get all those microbes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> maybe you will. Peter's yeah. the man. Peter, Peter, Peter is uh, he's. He, he is the man for, for VR, so... Uh, okay. <laughs> well, we've, been, we've been studying some of the things. I've been shooting in VR, primrose hill parks and environments for many years. There are over 2 million uh, people viewing those images now on, on, on Google and, and others. So yeah. it's been very popular, but uh, I assume that they go and see the parks and then the beautiful flowers, even in, in Queen Mary Garden in Regent's Park, because, because of that, because they, they kind of feel something they're yeah. almost there but it's it's just kind of proximity to that image is mm. what calms their minds it's what yeah. you know gets you into yeah. parasympathetic nervous system i guess or something like that yeah there was no. the the, 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 speaker, the speaker yesterday was saying that if you're in a hospital bed that has a view of green space you will heal you'll, yeah. you'll, you'll occupy that bed for a shorter period of time if you're in yeah yeah, exactly, as opposed to seeing a brick wall. So, yeah, that, that suggests that virtual reality would have the same effect. But even, okay. even if your commute if your commute involves mm. a view of green space on your way into work, it decreases mm. stress levels. So mm. it, I, I don't see why virtual reality would be mm. different. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Thank you for that. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Michael, okay. I was intrigued that first slide that you showed of... Um, these beautiful sunflowers and everything. Yes. It was right by the railway track, wasn't it? Um, no, so it's, it's um, I'll just get it up again. It seemed to be near something. Uh... Um, so we are, um, so yes, oh, if you yeah. see the, the metal fence behind there, it, it backs on, yes. It's not holy. The, it does no. back onto the railway. I Maybe it's another see. slide with the sunflowers. Yes, yeah, so I'm trying to get there. Give me one second. There we are. So yes. Says this, um, Nicola, yeah, says yes, there are railway arches and yes, there oh, is a railway yeah. track. So, yeah. Can you all see that? Yeah. 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 We're yeah. Still so on, we I'm, are, I'm, are right next to the overground there. So that's gorgeous. We're still looking yes. at poppies. We're looking at poppies. Oh, we're still looking at poppies. Sorry. Yeah. Are they just, are they from seed, the poppies? Um, yes, they were all from seed, yes. Mm. So do you just scatter them and then hope for the best or? Um, so uh, with uh, uh, wildflower seeds, um, yeah. what you generally need is you need quite bad soil, if you can. Um, Sorry? Because uh, you need it to be quite poor soil, so they won't oh, do yeah. as well in um, high quality soil. And the oh. best time to sow them is either September uh -huh. or in spring so kind of march time so okay. i we sowed all those ones in september and they came up the following kind of late april may because it was quite hot oh nice yeah so yeah just scatter the seed and kind of rake them in lightly and that's uh -huh. that's all you need to do okay but you don't need compost <laughs> they don't like compost no, don't don't, no, don't put compost no yeah, no, that's what I did with the front of the of the garden, and there's quite mm -hmm. a lot of wildflowers that's come up, which is quite. But I did that last year, so it's quite nice to see them popping up. Quite a nice mm -hmm. surprise. 
yeah, yeah no they're, they're beautiful puppies and and because they produce so much seed every year you should get a lot more coming up again uh, um so you just give those seed heads a shake yeah um, they're like little maracas so yeah. <laughs> you have the nursery kids going around shaking yeah them. nice so what do you do what what do you do with children um, children, so um, in uh, pre-pandemic times, um, we uh, used to have a families uh, session every week. So it's called Families Growing Together. So we used to do natural arts and crafts. So we'd make scarecrows, we'd uh, grow veg and things like that and uh, make bird feeders and things like that. So our gardening, we're starting up an after school gardening club. I think it's next week. So it's just straight after school for an hour, families come and just do a different gardening activity in the park. Kids love it. They, they just want to get messy. They particularly love worms. So we've made wormeries and things like that as well. Um, so yeah, any excuse to just run around and yeah, cause chaos. <laughs> <laughs> Teenagers, I found are the, the, the trickiest group to engage um, in gardening. But if you can get them young, then you're more likely to um, yeah, get them when they're older. But since lockdown, we have had a lot uh, more younger volunteers than we previously had, though. So that's really, really good. Um, because, because they weren't working, presumably. Um, yeah, and, and not at school necessarily, or not in education in the in the same way. And um, yeah, and I think the the kind of generation um, Z that they are now are very, very engaged in uh, climate yeah. change and uh, the natural world. So yeah, I yeah. think they'll be bright future gardeners about to come through as well yeah so when people come as volunteers is it just drop in or can do you is it a slightly more formal process um it, yeah it's not very formal just because there isn't the infrastructure to make it very formal yeah. so we uh ask people to uh email us in advance for the first time they're coming and then you can tell, kind of tell me as and when you're coming in the future but obviously we have registration forms and all of that. But um, after all that, we have just a list of tasks to do that day. Um, if we have some long-term volunteers that know what they're doing, they can pair off with someone. Yeah. Um, and then we'll be working at different parts around the site. So yeah, so it's lots to do. And it depends on what people's interests are as well. Some people like vegetables, some people like flowers. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Do you... Different. um? Do you know about the, is it the Permia, Permia culture? Permaculture. Um, Permaculture yeah. group that's, uh, that sort of, I've seen them turning up at Cecil Sharp Gardens. Have you seen them? Um, I know of them, but I don't know very much about when they meet. I'm not sure. Does anyone else here know? It, it, it's, it's, it, it's called a Perma Blitz. Oh, oh yeah. is it? Okay. They do, they do it on a Friday, but... Um, they like you to email first. Um, oh, okay. Can you um, volunteer your garden to have it blitz? Ah, a good question. I don't know. <laughs> I have to email them. That would be quite fun yes. to kind of so the London have lots of people. The London per I'll look, I'll look them up. Hang on. And I'll okay. It. Yeah. So is this, Dora, is this recorded, isn't it, all this? Yes, all this yes stuff it on is. on the side. I can uh, look look at later, can I? Yes. Okay, fab, thank you. I'll, I'll just add the uh, National Park City uh, movement that I was talking about as well into the chat on their website. So Nicola, yeah, maybe just re re repeat the uh, that statistic that you gave Yes, us. so um, I... Um, Hopefully it's gone up maybe by half a percent now, but London oh. is officially like 47% green space. So that Yay. is, I, um, yeah, because we have so many uh, public parks, so many community gardens and uh, lucky to have quite a lot of housing with uh, gardens as well. Yeah. So that's all counted and they um, made a huge map as well. So I've just put, uh, yeah. it's a National Park City movement and they're oh, aiming yeah. to get yeah, the figure up to 50%. So encouraging oh, sure. people to depave um, their gardens as well. Yeah. So I've just put the, the link in to the- um, Oh yes, there, thank you so much. The information about set the Cecil Sharp House gardening. Ah. So they, they've got it, there's an email address in there, which- Okay, is, lovely, thank you, Dora. Yeah. Okay. 
we have great. any any final questions or yes, we... any more questions <laughs> we're all drawing to an end don't we yes um, i think uh, so <laughs> yeah. i just like can i just quote yeah. can i just quote schopenhauer please i've just found yes of course yeah. 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 Says, there is only one healing power and that is nature Yay! <laughs> it's a good quote to end on. It's absolutely true. So, so yeah. on that note, thank you, everyone. That's amazing. I'm glad I joined. Thank you. Good, good to see you, and um, thank you so much, um, Nicola. It's been really, no really thanks, been Nicola. Thank, thank you, so much. you. Thank you for having me, everyone. And, um, I, I hope Great. we'll we'll find some good volunteers for you as well. Yes, absolutely. I, I do all come and visit if you haven't been to Castle Haven before. So. Yeah. Oh, sorry, where is it? Oh, Castle Heaven. Yes, I know it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So do you need Great. volunteers did you say yeah so we, our volunteering session runs on wednesdays from 10 30 to 2 30 okay. okay are you is that happening tomorrow Yes, it is happening tomorrow okay. I'll, I'll pop in and say hello okay great fantastic okay. great nice to see you. okay Brilliant. thank you bye-bye bye-bye